Motion 10 regarding domestic violence. Uh, I welcome Minister White back to very familiar surroundings uh, and call on Senator Marie Maloney to move motion. Senator, you have 10 minutes. Thank you, Alaski Herlock and Minister. Welcome to the House. I had hoped that Mr. Alan Shatter would have been here, but however, you are very welcome. <laughs> I am pleased to move this very important motion in this House on behalf of Labour Senators. It seeks to encourage a comprehensive debate on the issue of domestic violence, a subject which, in my view, rarely gets enough political attention and one which sadly remains a serious blight on our society, wreaking havoc in homes up and down the country. Domestic violence is a crime, and I mean a crime, and I will address later the issue of the crime, which involves various forms of physical, sexual and psychological violence, or which threatens the safety or welfare of family members and persons in domestic relationships. There is a very strong evidence that this is an underreported crime in Ireland. Even as an underreported problem, the statistics are truly shocking. Over 11,000 women and children sought safety from home violence in 2011. The latest year for which statistics are available from Safe Ireland, which does invaluable work in the area of domestic violence. 11,000 in one year. That's over 210 women and children every single week seeking refuge from abuse and violence. The 2011 figures represented a 56% rise on 2007, when such statistics were first recorded by Safe Ireland. Disturbingly, also, some 3,000 children received support from domestic violence services in 2011. Now, the data for 2012 will be available later in the year, but as the Chief Executive of Safe Ireland, Sharon O'Halloran, has rightly remarked, the figures are a horrific and sad indictment of our society as a whole. It is only right that I would acknowledge the significant strides that have been made in this area in terms of legislation in recent years. I want to commend the government and indeed its predecessors for the provisions of the Civil Law Miscellaneous Provisions Bill of 2011, which allows parents with a child in common to apply for a safety order regardless of whether or not they are cohabiting. It also provides that cohabiting partners can now apply for safety orders without any specific duration of cohabitation required. However, the specific duration clause also needs to be removed when applying for a barring order. I would also like to commend Minister Alan Shatter and his European colleagues for agreeing just two months ago a series of measures allowing for the mutual recognition of protection measures in civil matters across the EU. Very significantly, this will ensure that where a woman, or indeed a man, who holds a barring order against a partner can avail of the effect of that order if they take up residence in or move for a short time to another EU member state. I welcome this agreement as a clear statement that domestic violence and gender-based violence is unacceptable across the EU. But while I welcome these arrangements, there is, in my view, much more that can be achieved. One of the key changes I believe that we urgently need in this country is the provision to allow a woman to apply at a weekend for an emergency barring order or a protection order, something she cannot currently do. If a woman is a victim of domestic violence on a Friday night, she has to wait until Monday morning when the courts open to seek judicial protection from a violent partner. I believe that a weekend when a barring order or even an interim order is being sought, we should put in place a system which would allow the on-call judge, in conjunction with the Gardaí, to arrange for the issuing of an emergency order to protect that woman until the courts open on a Monday. This change would be a major relief for many women, or men as the case may be, who find themselves trapped in a domestic violence situation over the weekend, a time when the incidents of violence in the home often reach their peak. I would invite Minister, the Minister for Justice to revisit one aspect of the 2011 legislation. Couples that are living apart but have a child in common are currently protected under our legislation. But I am concerned that the same provision does not exist for couples who are living apart and who have never lived together and who do not have a child. If the couple are in an intimate relationship and a violent situation exists, they are currently ineligible to apply for a safety order. And this brings me to the crux of the whole problem. It is remarkable. I believe that domestic violence is not itself defined as a crime in our statute book. Nobody in Ireland can be charged with domestic violence. 
Nobody can claim in law that they have been a victim of domestic violence, and no official statistics about the extent of domestic, domestic violence can be gathered by the authorities, given that it is not a criminal offence in itself. If a barring order or protection order is breached, it is only then that a crime is being committed. An act of domestic violence is not defined, a defined crime per se. The Council of Europe Convention in this area, which Ireland has not yet signed, and which I will refer to in a moment, sets out the criminal offences that fall under the domestic violence umbrella. And I believe that it will provide a good legal template for the enactment of legislation in this area, which will specifically criminalise domestic violence in law. Moreover, the Swedish model is one that I believe the Minister should examine. The Swedish Government has created a crime dealing with a gross violation on the integrity of a woman, which is of greater offence than a public assault. Prosecution carries a sentence of five years. I would encourage, therefore, a comprehensive debate in this House and in society in general on the need to make domestic violence a clearly defined crime punishable by law. I also want to encourage Minister Shatter to move up the government on the government's agenda, the Council of Europe's Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence. The Convention is the most far-reaching international treaty to tackle the problem and sets out the ambition of achieving zero tolerance for such violence across Europe. Very significantly, the Convention recognises violence against women, women as a violation of human rights and means that states are held responsible if they do not respond adequately to such violence. Preventing violence, protecting its victims, and prosecuting the perpetrators are the cornerstones of the Convention. To date, 29 out of 47 countries have signed this Convention. Will Ireland make it 30, and in particular, while we hold the presidency? The many services which cater for the victims of domestic violence are presently under financial pressure. There is no disguising that. At a minimum, in this year's estimates and budgets, we need to protect the statutory funding available to refuges and support services around the country. Alarmingly, in 2011, on some 2,500 occasions, services nationwide were unable to accommodate women because they were full or there was no refuge in the area. In my home county, there are just six beds available at any one time at the Adapt Kerry Women's Refuge in Tralee, and they are often full. Six beds in the whole of Kerry for people who need help. If an entire family moves in, it can be a week or two before they find alternative accommodation and thus the beds are unavailable to others who may need them. I want to commend the work that the staff of ADAPT, Kerry and Tralee and so many other similar services around the, the country carry out on a daily basis. Staff are regularly confronted with traumatised, petrified and browbeaten victims of domestic violence and the care and sensitivity they provide can be of immense support to the people affected. I also want to commend the many so-called Mackenzie friends who accompany women and occasionally men to in-camera court hearings and who help them through a very traumatic situation where they have to confront the perpetrator of the violence for the first time since the act was committed. At present, a lot of agencies which deal with domestic violence in Ireland are concerned that there is too much fragmentation in relation to funding and legislation in the area. There have been calls for a dedicated funding street for stream for domestic violence services as well as an overhaul of the legislative provisions in the area. I know that Minister Shatter is very dedicated to such a review of the provisions the government is making and I would suggest that now more than ever, at a time of economic pressures, which can often lead to tensions, stress and sometimes violence in the home, that our commitment to legislative and funding provisions is greater than ever. There are a lot of bureaucratic barriers for women trying to access state support when they are seeking protection. And a significant contributing factor to this is related to the lack of provision in housing legislation to address domestic violence. And I will be taking this issue up with Minister General Sullivan that we should amend our housing legislation so that domestic violence is recognised as a primary cause of homelessness. I encourage your colleagues to engage constructively and with the sensitivity this debate deserves. Let's part party politics and defend the families of Ireland that are the victims of this evil that manifests itself through cowardly domestic violence. My colleagues will deal with some of the other aspects of this motion and perhaps at the conclusion of it, I will have time to revisit some of the issues I've mentioned and I commend the motion to the House. Thank you, Senator Maloney.